Welcome, everyone, to the L7C podcast, Super Football Edition. Today, we are going to be talking some college football, and we're going to be talking some NFL football for y'all this week, so a very special episode. And we have both our experts in that regard. We have the captain, Byron Mitchell. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. I am good. And then we also have the producer, Mr. Justin Ackendale. He will be in the NFL part when we get to it, and we'll ask him how he's doing when he's ready. Byron, it's the game week. Yes, Um, sir. Before we talk about that team up north, let's talk about that big game we had this past Saturday against number seven, Michigan State. Um, Everything was lining up for a Michigan State upset. It was the same day a couple years ago where Michigan State beat Urban Meyer's best team, the 2015 team. Same time, same date. Everything was almost the same, except this game was at 12. The other game was at night. But Kirk Cousins back up because Kirk Cousins got hurt. Um, but they did not upset us. Byron Wheat trounced them 56 to 7. Were you expecting that? Uh, no, I was not expecting the game to be over by halftime. Like halfway through the third quarter, even. <laughs> no, the second quarter. Second quarter, it was over. So, yeah, because second quarter, it was 49 to zero. Yes. 49 to zero in the second quarter. Honestly, I think Michigan State messed up with giving Ohio State the ball first. I think they should have drove downfield first, established confidence so they could score. But once Ohio State went boom, boom on the first couple of plays, touchdown, and then they went three and out, and then we went boom, boom again, it was all over for them. They... They had, we talked about it last week. They had the worst pass defense, let alone in the country, I believe. And it really mm-hmm. showed uh, this past Saturday. So, Byron, go ahead, man. Yes. Uh, like you said, Michigan State had their worst, one of their worst pass defenses I've ever seen from a uh, thin. That's um, saying something coming from us. Right. Because <laughs> our def- pass defense is not that great. Mm-hmm. Um, but CJ Stroud had a monster game again. It went for Yes, 32 for 35, but only missed three passes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had 432 passing yards, mm. six touchdowns, mm. and zero interceptions. Did CJ play the whole game? CJ, uh, no, they set him in the, like, after the first drive in the third quarter. Oh, so he could have had, had eight, he could have had eight, nine, potentially ten touchdowns if he played the whole game. Yes, potentially, but we wanted to save him because, you know, we got still got a football season left mm-hmm. um our run game uh overall we had 206 yards um master t uh, at 21 yards 95 i mean 21 carries 95 yards and a touchdown on a senior day uh Trevion henderson had nine carries for 63 yards and then Mayan williams had four carries for 35 yards and a touchdown so most of our offensive capability came from cj Stroud. uh chris olave had a very great game, seven receptions, 140 yards, two touchdowns, broke the wide receiver touchdown record mm-hmm. um, on his senior day. Garrett Wilson, seven receptions, 126 yards, also two touchdowns. And then Jackson Smith and Jigba had 10 receptions, 105 yards, and a touchdown. And then Video Julian, game numbers, man. Yeah, that was the, the top offense. Top, yes, the top three receivers had video game numbers. And then um, also Julian. Fleming uh, caught a touchdown from C.J. Stroud as well. Our defense played very well. Um, they held Kenneth Walker III, um, who was one of the Heisman frontrunners, uh, for six carries and 25 yards, no touchdown. Um, their quarterback, Peyton Thorne, had 14 completions for 36, uh, for 158 yards and a touchdown. So his touchdown came late um, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's why I said Michigan State should have took the ball first because their best player is a running back. And if the other team is just slinging the ball all over the field and you're behind 21 points in five minutes, you're going to abandon the run game. They abandoned Mm -hmm. it. I mean, we were stopping him anyway, but once you're down 21, 28, 35, 0, you can't run the ball because you're wasting clock and you need all the clock you can get. So they had to throw the ball, and their offense isn't built like that. So that was a bad Mm -hmm. mistake on them. And even the coach from Michigan State, Mel Tucker, 
who was on our staff in 2002 when we won the national championship. So he knows how the stadium is. And he even mm-hmm. said it himself. Once that's once the stadium starts rocking and they're going, it's over. Like, cause in that avalanche, like if they're scoring, the crowd's into it. Mm-hmm. It's a wrap. And the crowd stays good. No fucking chance. <laughs> And there is the producer, Mr. Ackendale. How you doing, man? Doing great. <laughs> but yeah, this this was wild. This was a wild game. Uh, you already said Olave broke the record. CJ Stroud, I mean, I don't see how you don't have him as the Heisman favorite right now, which is you know, crazy for some OSU fans who wanted him benched in the third game. Wanted him benched in the third game because, you know, they say he wasn't having a great season, but he was like statistically, he only like threw three interceptions for that those first three games, and he was dealing with a shoulder injury, which he injured during the Minnesota game and told everyone on Thursday. But apparently, not a lot of OSU fans remember that. Mm. Justin, you want anything to add on to the Michigan State before we move on? Um, OSU fans are cuckoo. They um <laughs> shouldn't have been slandering CJ Stroud so early, and now they understand. The man is probably about to win the highs now after um, Saturday's performance. And Michigan State stood no chance. They could have took the ball first. They could have done anything. The only way that they were going to win that game is if C.J. Stroud got hurt and two of the receivers got hurt. That was their <laughs> only chance of winning. That game was <laughs> annoying to watch. Thought it was going to be close. Had a buddy at the game who's like, his dad went to Ohio State, so he ain't really an Ohio State fan, but he is, and he was sick too. He was like, damn. I came here to see a good game, and the game was over by the second quarter. Yeah, no one expected 56 to 7. But moving on from them, we're in the game week over here in Ohio. If you're listening to it across the nation or a different country, we call it Beat Michigan Week. We call them the team up north. Uh, this rivalry started October 16th, 1897. Currently, Michigan leads the all time series 58. 58- 51 and six. So we are closing that gap. Largest victory in this thing was Michigan 86, Ohio State 0 in 1902. The longest win streak was nine games. Michigan from 1901 to 1909. And the current win streak is Ohio State 2012 to present. So if Ohio State wins this game this Saturday, they will tie the longest win streak in this series. And this is a matchup of two top five teams. This means everything to these two schools, the two uh, states. Byron, first off, what does the game mean to you? And how do you see this going down? Oh, this is a big rivalry. I just remember everyone, like in middle school, high school, everyone just hyping this up um, the whole week about, you know, Ohio State's going to beat Michigan. No, Michigan's going to beat Ohio State. So it's just, it's a great rivalry to watch um, every year. Uh, I, I love it. Justin, what do you think about the um, OSU-Michigan rivalry and this game? Because this is number two, which, uh, spoiler, OSU went to number two. First number five. Yeah, it's definitely a huge game. Um, Growing up in Columbus, that game is religion. So, absolutely. I've been watching that game forever. I'm an Ohio State supporter, not a fan, so I can always look at it clearly. And, yeah. In Columbus and then um, Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's the only game that matters on um, Saturday. Yeah, it, especially in Columbus. I can't speak for the Michigan fans, but at Ohio State, if you've watched the clip of Urban Meyer when he was commentating for Fox, he talks about how much this game truly means to Columbus and the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes, when you when they start off season workouts, they have a clock in the weight room counting down to the Michigan game. They have beat Michigan drills, and Ryan Days continue this too that. Every after every practice, they do talk about Michigan. So it means a hell of a lot more me personally to Columbus than it does to Michigan because they've st- like if we lose this game, we're not going to the playoffs. Point blank, period. And that's how it used to be before the playoffs, where if we didn't beat Michigan, we didn't go to the Rose Bowl, or we didn't go to the national championship. So that's why this game's so important. And we're going to Michigan. Uh, they're the best defense we've played this year. Byron. What does OSU need to do to win this game? Do whatever they did against Michigan State. Okay. Plain and simple. CJ Stroud needs to have an amazing game. The defense needs to step up. 
Um, and it's the number one, I believe the number one scoring offense against like the number seven scoring defense. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's going to be, it should be a close game, but I'm hoping that it's not. Um, but yeah, CJ Stroud just needs him to have another Heisman performance and everyone just needs to be clicking on all cylinders. Justin, you're our betting expert. OSU right now is a minus seven. They're only a seven point favorite, which is surprising to me. Would you take that? Yeah, I would. I would take OSU to cover seven. I mean, the Michigan State game was three touchdowns, and they blew that out the water. Um, Michigan State did beat Michigan. Michigan's offense is not really explosive. I know they lost their um, top receiver. So I don't see how Michigan's going to keep up. I don't think the defense is going to be able to stop them. I don't know how good their secondary is, but stopping Ohio State's receivers is going to be a tall order for honestly anyone, shit, even Georgia probably. So, yeah, I definitely see Ohio State covering that game and going to a Big Ten championship. It's going to be crazy up there in Michigan. Uh, Fox's big noon crew is going to be there. ESPN's college game, game day is going to be there. So both of them are going to be there. Fox is covering the game. Pat and Johnson. So it's That's interesting. Be- Have they ever been to, to, at the same spot at the same time before? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have no choice when this this is the biggest game of the weekend. If ESPN mm-hmm. wanted to go somewhere else, I mean, ESPN they, probably go with the Bedlam. Isn't that the game that they're covering? It's the you night know? game, yeah. But I mean, that game's not bigger than two versus five. Yeah, it's not. So I'll, 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 oh, but yeah. no, yeah, that's a good question because most people don't know that. That since Fox, there have been times where they've both been in the shoe at the uh, like at the horseshoe or at another place at the same time. So it's wow, but yeah, we gotta win. Like I understand some of us are all of us here are not we're old enough that if you paid attention to older people watching late in the nineties of Cooper always losing to Michigan and Cooper go ten and two, eleven and one, you lose to Michigan, your whole season doesn't matter. Period. The man got yeah. fired and he was like ten and two, eleven and one almost every year. But couldn't beat mm-hmm. Michigan. Lloyd Carr kept smacking them. Well, Michigan was probably better. I know Michigan in the nineties was going to Rose Bowls and shit because they were winning that game. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they were good in the early trestles. I mean, they went to a couple of Rose Bowl. Well, one, but they were good too. It's just Ohio State kept plugging on. They got ever since Michigan got rid of Lloyd Carr, they haven't been the same. No, they had no. Brady Hoke, who only beat us during the Luke Fickle transition year. Um, mm-hmm. The closest Michigan has got, and I think Justin, did you go to that game to the uh, walk off, the double overtime? I went. To I was the, at that I went game. to the one that they got blown. That the, the probably the year after they got blown out. Oh, you went to that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was that. at the. Um, I was you at, were the, at the Curtis Samuel. Yeah, you yep, were at the two walk-off. versus three. Mm-hmm. So no, nah, man, this this is gonna be good. I, I do expect it was. I they need to win because if they don't win, everything in front of them is gone. So let's get into it right now. College football playoff came on. Uh, the rankings came out. Um, in our group messages, we talked about OSU jumping to number two, and they did. Georgia is number one. OSU is number two. Alabama is number three. Number four is the Cincinnati Bearcats. About damn time. All right. <laughs> I know there was some chatter that people were going to try and have Michigan be number five. I know I and Byron, we were not having that. No. Um, number six is Notre Dame. Number seven is Oklahoma State. Number eight is Baylor. Number nine is Mississippi. Number 10 is Oklahoma. Uh, well, quickly, if you're asking what happened to Oregon, they were number three, and they got shellacked by Utah. So there is – and then they went to 11, and Michigan State went to 12. Uh, first off, uh, Justin, right move, OSU number two. Yeah, absolutely. When you fucking road grade Michigan State the way they did, they had to move up over Alabama. Alabama only won by seven Mm -hmm. against um, Arkansas, even though Arkansas really ain't bad. Bryce Young went off, but yeah, Ohio State definitely played better in their game against a better opponent. Byron, Cincinnati number four, the right move? Of course it's the right move. They should have been top four ever since the college football playoffs came out. But no, they want to put Alabama at two because it's ESPN. I, I want I want to put this on the record. The last time 
Cincinnati hasn't lost a regular season game in two years. And the only time they have lost in the past since since the beginning of the 2020 season was in the um, Peach Bowl against Georgia. And, and that was a game. Was yes, a game. we were in that game pretty much the whole damn game. So just, just a little two cents. Yeah. So I, and they play Friday, mm-hmm. too. So definitely got to watch that so they can hopefully finish the regular season undefeated as um shout out to our Dragon Ball expert, Mitch Oso, which he needs to trademark this before this state does. Currently right now, it is the SEC versus Ohio if the playoffs mm-hmm. start today. And that will be, and that is going to sell a lot of t-shirts if mm-hmm. it stays true. So Mitch, trademark that now, man. And then have the state buy it from you. But the surprising thing for me, Byron, Notre Dame is at six. Yeah, it was... If chaos happens, they could sneak in. They definitely could sneak in. Um, they definitely would need either Ohio State or Michigan to lose. They don't? No, they don't. They just need Alabama to lose hmm. now. What? That's true. If out well, they're I, six, I, right? Watch. They're six. Let's hear it. Don't let's let me hear okay. me out. They're six. Mm-hmm. Alabama's three. If Alabama loses to Georgia, that's two losses. They're they're out of the top five. Michigan's going to lose to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. They'll be out. So they'll be below. That is already putting Northern. If Michigan loses this week, that's five. If Alabama loses the SEC championship game, they're out. And if Cincinnati, Ohio State, and Georgia wins, Notre Dame's going in. You don't think a one loss Oklahoma State could potentially jump them? You don't think that'd be Oklahoma? Nope. You can't trust any of those or, teams. Uh, has Baylor lost twice? No. Yep. They are, they're they're done. Lose? They're not making it. Yeah, they lost twice. They lost a T they lost a uh, TCU after they got rid of Gary <laughs> Patterson. Well. Yeah, Baylor's Baylor's nine and two. Mississippi's nine and two. But no, Justin, because the other reason too is Notre Dame's only loss, if it starts right now, is to the number four team in the country. And they've run I rough mean, shot on everyone else. They could get in. The only way I see them losing, getting in, is if Michigan loses again. If they, if they lose, if, if they lose Michigan in the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. Oh well, Michigan's not beating us, so they, I'm I mean, not if even they do, considering that, if they were, if they were the one, because oh, Notre Michigan, Dame oh, yeah. to get in, they will need a Michigan win on Saturday. True, but all oh, that fourth spot, like we've talked about, it comes down to Bama because Bama's going to lose to Georgia. I. I because if Bama beats Georgia, we're going to have freaking you know they both in. <laughs> Oh, they both will get it. But if Bama loses, they're out. That's why I'm saying that fourth spot is Too wide much, yeah. open. Because yeah. I just don't believe in Oklahoma State. They're both, they're going to lose. And Oklahoma, they're at ten. Like there's they, there's no jump. way it's they so get it. Well, they play. They've, oh, they've been dude, playing dude. like dog Not shit all one. goddamn year. Yeah. I mean, they've been they've been winning somehow, mm-hmm. but nah, there's no way. Yeah, that's, that's why to, I said, well, hey, if they, if they went out, nah, there's no way. I'm not. No, you, I get what you're saying. If, if Notre Dame loses this weekend, and then Oklahoma State mm-hmm. has a shot, yes, nah. you're right. Yeah, you're, because um, there's no way they'll put a one loss. If both teams have one loss, Notre Dame gets a 10 out of 10. That's just branding. Oh, I was just about to say that. You think of, could you imagine a college football playoff with, Ohio, again, Ohio State, um, you have the SEC Georgia, underdog Cincinnati, and a yeah. blue blood like Notre Dame. Branding, ratings, Oklahoma. I mean, Notre Dame is going to bring more fans than Oklahoma State yeah. to the TV. Yeah. That's very interesting that they've quietly gone to six, but that makes Cincinnati look better because they six, their best win is against the number six team. It's going to be, it's going to be wild, man. Like, uh, any shot? Well, Auburn's finally out of the top twenty-five. About damn time because they love. They probably them only there. took him out because both Knicks ain't going to play against Bama this weekend. Oh, they're going to get slaughtered. That game shouldn't even be on TV. But guess who got ranked this time? Byron, I good old buddies, that. Clemson. Good for you, Clemson. After shellacking number ten, Wake for- Wake Forest was number. Yep. And they dropped all the way to 18. Good for you, Clemson. They beat the they beat the brakes off of them. They could still, I think, win the ACC. Mm-hmm. The maybe, ACC maybe. is horrible. 
it, it is. <laughs> but Clemson is building now for next, next year. I think they'll be back next year. And that shitty ass conference. I do too. I do too. Don't take, it don't take much. <laughs> they already won the two nights, so they got they got the clout. The crazy thing I is, agree. though, even though they I beat agree. Wake Forest, Wake Forest is still number one in the Atlantic ACC. Well, they've only lost twice. Yeah, they're six and, and one in the two, conference. So. And Clemson is six and two in the conference. So they need some help. They would need Wake to... Forest to lose this weekend to make the ACC championship. Who's Wake? Who's Wake play? North Carolina, Carolina probably. Uh, let's. I think so. Let me check. Yeah, that North. I'm looking. That Notre Dame spot is so interesting. Wake Forest plays Boston College. Oh, uh, yeah, they're going. Okay. All right, uh, Byron, Justin, anything else before we shift to NFL? I do have one more thing that I'm going to go off on. At the what end. about football? About um college or the NFL? Uh, yes, sir. College? Go off now. <laughs> yeah, and I have it. I, might as well. <laughs> oh, all right. In the in, in the in the college football segment, so, off right. All right, so I have a problem with the whole college football. Whoever votes for anything in the league. My problem is that, Justin, I don't know if you have seen this yet, but um, they announced the awards for, like, the final, like, the Belichikoff, the top wide receiver reward. Justin, I don't know if you know, they only take three Mm -hmm. receivers, right? And none of the Ohio State receivers were picked as a finalist for the best wide receiver in the country. Mm. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. Even though statistically they are beating all of the receivers who were picked. <laughs> and not one. Who are the three OSU, that are going to um, New York or wherever they do the college football awards? I know I one is David Bell, a receiver at Purdue. I can't remember the other three. Mm-hmm. I mean, the David other two. Bell. Let me pull it up. And Mr. Joel Klatt was going, was going off on that. But I just sat there and I just said, hmm, this is, this is what we're doing. Jameson nice Williams. Fun, right? All right. David Bell. Yep. Jameson Williams. Hey, and Justin, I hope you know Jameson Williams. What school? Wide receiver okay. from Alabama. Yep. He went to school at Ohio State. He transferred because he wasn't going to sniff the field because of the talent we have right now. But now he's one of the finalists. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Jordan Addison for Pittsburgh. <laughs> none of the O, oh, not even Chris Olave or Wilson, and just none of them. I, I just want to know who voted for that because that makes no damn sense. Makes zero sense. I I, I don't have a defense. I, yeah, it's odd. You said all three of them are statistically better than the three that are gone. Crystal Lave has the, like the only the only, the only logical explanation 13. I can think think of for them not taking any OSU receiver is that mm-hmm. they will all play off each other, making everything easier for one another. Because you can't double, like you can't double one of them because one of them will be open type shit. So that's the that's the only way I can rationalize it. I think it, I, I, I hear your rationalization because I've heard that. It's just wild to think that the best receiving core in the country who has the best receiver in Chris Olave, who's gonna, who has the next best receiver, who's going to be the best receiver next year, and then Jigba, no one in the top three. That's just like saying, I mean, when they do the running backs, is Travion Henderson not going to be potentially put on? I'm trying to. Th- I'm trying I mean, to think. Did any of those Alabama receivers win Belinda Co- the Belinda Cop Award? Wasn't it Devonta Smith? Yeah, Devonta the Heisman Smith. winner last year. Devonta Devonta oh. Smith he yep. won all the awards. Yeah, that's odd. And I can understand him because he lost. So I'm just so if Jalen Waddle played the full season, oh, no, he might not have won the Heisman. Jalen Waddle played the whole season because they might. Did, be did Jamar Chase win the, the Belinda Cop full season? I don't know. Um, I would have. Who was the best? I assume he because because Justin receiver. Jefferson was his other receiver. 
and they had Moss a tight end. I know and, they're not tight ends, and we're but... so, that team was just stacked. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting those uh, awards. I watch that you LSU right Natty Championship team every Sunday. They're everywhere. Joe Burrow, Patrick Queen, Jamar Chase, <laughs> <laughs> fucking everywhere. Justin Jefferson went off. Oh, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, uh, he won the Belinikoff Award in 2019. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a. See, that's why college football fans fans are always pissed off and pissed off on Twitter. The sport <laughs> does shit like this. <laughs> it, it's amazing that we still watch it every Sunday. I mean Saturday. Shoot, in 2018, Jerry Alabama's had. Listen to this. Alabama had 2014. Amari mm-hmm. Cooper won it. 2018, Jerry mm-hmm. Judy won it, and then 2020, Devontae Smith won it. Hmm. Alabama be, knows how to produce wide receivers. They can't be watching the games. I, I just want to know because we've had people recently like Brandon Cooks won in 2013, uh, D.D. Westbrook, James Washington, I be. Michael Crabtree is the only person to win it. No, Michael Crabtree and Justin Blackman, the only two to win it back to back. And people all saying school. The only OSU receiver to ever win, Terry Glenn in Damn. 1995. Wow. And that's that's crazy. Hmm. But uh, what can you do? Byron, you got anything else before we switch it to um, NFL? Go Bucks. Beat Michigan. Stay focused this weekend. Finish the season off right. Justin, man, transition us into some NFL talk. um, Week 12 was, I mean, week 11 was bullshit once again. If you were watching Red Zone on on Sunday during the one o'clock window, you would have seen like five picks in a row. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. But we will start with what was supposed to be the game of the weekend. My Cowboys at the Chiefs. Chiefs won the game 19 to 9. So we didn't score a touchdown. And the over under for this game was 56 and a half points. And that didn't, and that wasn't close. We were very hurt going to the game. Mari Cooper has COVID and he's not vaccinated. So he's going to miss. He misses, he's missing last game. He's going to miss the one on Thursday. Gave up five sacks. Tyron Smith didn't play. Chris Jones had three and a half. Goddamn Chiefs defense decided to play like the steel curtain. They only gave up 276 yards. The Chiefs offense was not impressing me, but they scored enough and the defense did the did the rest. Cowboys got into the red zone four times, only ended up with three field goals. And then after and then we kicked the field goal in the fourth quarter with like eight minutes left. And that's when I knew it was over. We weren't doing shit all game. And yeah, the game was just complete bullshit. Justin, when you said the uh, the week was bullshit, I just want to ask: so who's good this year in the NFL? Who's good? Who's good? Because every time I think a team's good, something happens. I thought the Rams were it. They've been smoked the past couple games. Obviously, Tampa Bay. I mean, they've been smoked, but you already know once it gets to playoffs, twelve is twelve. I would think every time there's an it team in the league. Well, I don't think smoked. any team is significantly better than the um than the next team. I don't think there's like a tier because if you're in the tier okay. of good teams, there's a there's a lot of good teams, and then I guess my tier below will be the shit teams that I think aren't going to make the playoffs or like on the on the fence. So I'll say okay. the good tier, you know, Cowboys, the Bills, even though they lost. They they're another <laughs> team I had as an AFC favorite. They got Green so Bay. Whacked. Rams. Who else am I missing? The Arizona Cardinals. Pretty much that class. And then you got the class below it. I would say okay. the Chiefs are firmly in that class. New England is shit. They might push your way to the first team, first tier if they keep playing. You don't have the Ravens? Ravens in the first I, class? I mean, I watch the Ravens a lot. And I don't think they're very good other than Lamar Jackson. So I personally have them in tier two. <laughs> Lamar Jackson <laughs> is just honestly amazing and covers up a lot for them. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Okay. I just don't know. Byron, what did you watch the Chiefs? No, Cowboys? I was uh, 
What was I doing? Oh, I was editing. <laughs> oh, oh, look at you. But no, I watched the game and it's crazy too because I really I was on the verge like, man, the Cowboys might be the best team in the league oh, when I everyone's healthy. So much shit, then I come man. in. It hurts. Yeah, and then CD left at half. I think if CD didn't leave at halftime, you guys would have still had a shot. I just think we didn't run the ball enough. Like, Zeke fucked up his ankle and, like, wasn't the same. He still stayed in the game. But I, I just didn't think we committed to the run enough. And then, like, the Chiefs, were, the Chiefs were honestly just better. Like, they had more they had more fire coming out. They had more juice. We came out kind of flat. Like, it wasn't our game. Fair enough. Uh, next game, we had a recap, which you – I think you need to trademark this term too, trying to get everyone in the L7 to see their money. Uh, 1 p.m. Kirk. That needs to be a t shirt trademark. You need to get that money, man. <laughs> I think it's true. I think I stole Go it. ahead. <laughs> but yeah, oh, 1 p.m. Oh, Kirk. Okay, that man is undefeated. Oh my God, he's a Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> this game is nuts. Was nuts. Packers um, at Vikings. I mean, first of all, Fuck that I was in Ohio because, like, the way I had my TV set up, I got the big screen TV on Red Zone. Then I had my little TV with the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Up, and I have Fox app. So, whatever game's mm-hmm. on Fox, that's on the screen. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, Packers, Vikings, Bengals don't play till four. Let's go. And then I got stuck with Lions Brown. <laughs> so I only saw this game on Red Zone and I watched the um, highlights yesterday, but goddamn, this game was fucking crazy. Kurt and Aaron Rodgers were both incredible. Rodgers, 67%, 385 yards, four touchdowns. Devontae Adams had seven catches, 115 yards, two touchdowns. 1 p.m. Kurt, 68%, 341 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. Jefferson went off eight catches, 169 yards, two touchdowns. Thielen did his thing, eight catches, 82 yards, one touchdown. Dalvin Cook, 25 touches, 115 total yards, one touchdown. The Vikings were up in this game, 23 to 10, with about eight minutes left in the third quarter. And then the Vikings did what they typically do, start to blow the lead. It gets to the fourth quarter after um, Devontae Adams scores his second tuck down. Packers up 24-3 with eight minutes left. Kirk gets the ball. Ball back, drives it down. Caps it off with a 23-yard to Justin Jefferson. The very next possession, there's about two minutes left in the game. Two and a half minutes left in the game. The very next possession, Aaron Rodgers throws a 75-yard bomb to Marcus Valdez skit for a touchdown. But they left too much time for Kirk. Three timeouts over 208 yet. And then the next play, Kirk Cousin throws throws what looks like to be a pick, but the Packer corner dropped it. And then and then they drive down the ball, kill the clock, and kick a field goal at like 10 yard line to win the game. Crazy game. Packers, they'll be fine. Oh, Packers play the Rams this week. So you got the Rams. I don't, I don't know if they'll be they're fine. gonna win the division. They're going, they're going to win the division. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're going to win the division terrible. unless Kirk keeps this role up. But yeah, I think in the NFC playoffs, no one's going to want to play the Vikings if they can find a way to win the games that they let that, that they let go most of the time. Well, that is true because the last time the Vikings were in the playoffs, that was against you. The didn't New have Orleans to bring Saints, that up. That was the only. <laughs> that was the only game Kirk Cousins was 1 p.m. Kirk on a real game. Motherfuckers be scared of Kirk Cousins with two minutes left. I, I swear to God, the, the nigga turns in. If it's one o'clock and no one is watching, the man turns into Tom Brady in the two minute drill. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, he has great weapons. He has a great running back. Kirk Cousins, yeah, was... Kirk, someone got to get in the ball, and Kirk can do that. Justin, man, the shocker, one of the many shockers, the Colts at the Bills. Colts won 41 to 15. What the um, hell happened? Jonathan Taylor happened. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the game. I just put it on here because I just want to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jonathan Taylor had 32 carries, 185 yards, four rushing touchdowns, and a receiving touchdown. He's averaging 5.8 yards a carry. Ari has over 1,000 yards and 15 total touchdowns. Since week six, I'm going to tell you his rushing stat line. He's had 45, 145 rushing yards, 147 rushing yards, 70, 70 rushing yards, 172 rushing yards against the Jets, 116 last week, 185 this week. And the um, seven yard game was when they lost to Tennessee. On Sunday, he. On the worst Carson win <laughs> kick of all time. <laughs> on Sunday, he tied the NFL record for most consecutive games with a 100 yard scrimmage and a rushing touchdown, eight straight. He tied it. Wow. He tied LT with Daniel Tomlinson. He doing he doing shit. He doing shit that goats are doing right now. And I think he should be mm-hmm. a front runner in the MVP, honestly, for just carrying Carson Wentz a shitty ass. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor has made <sighs> Carson Wentz a viable quarterback again. No, oh, I I I agree. I don't know. Every time I think of an MVP, like at first beginning, I thought it was going to be Lamar because Lamar was having better stats than his MVP season. I thought Kyler Mm -hmm. was going to be there. But now I think it's going to be Jonathan at this moment in time, Jonathan Taylor, especially if he takes the Colts to the playoffs because it ain't Carson taking Carson went up. I mean, yes, yes, he does. The line was (laughs) hurt early in earlier in the year. So like the stats I gave off is when the line got healthy. So. That's contributing a lot, but the man is just incredible. I mean, if you can take Carson, Carson Wentz has also cut down on his turnovers like a lot since last year with the Eagles. So that's also helping the team's lead to leading success, but it's all about Jonathan Taylor and the Colts offensive line. Like, How dangerous of a threat do you think they'd be in the playoffs? Oh, I don't think anyone wants to play them. It's going to be cold. They can run the ball. Mm-hmm. Carson, Carson Wentz is the only question mark. But they can, they might be able to run run the ball to an AFC championship game. Colts play Tampa this week. So, Ooh. yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see uh, what they'll uh, do uh, against oh, um, <laughs> good old Tom Brady going up to Indy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Fireman, what are you thinking about Jonathan Taylor right now? Like, I know your team's in the NFC, so you're not really paying attention to the AFC. But what do you think about the Colts I mean, right now, if- Taylor? He can, like just say, he's going to rush into the AFC Championship. He should definitely win the MVP because this man has been on a tear since week six. Like, I, my team played him in our fantasy, and he scored 53 points. So, 50 I'm scared of that. I'm scared of him. <laughs> Justin, man, I will say the past two times we've been on NFL-wise, you've been given – We've given praise to the running backs because last time you were on, you were talking. I had to calm it down a bit because you were talking Derrick Henry like yeah, top five Derek of all Henry, time. I think he got hurt either the week after or two weeks after. Yeah. <laughs> so at all, but I, I do like Jonathan. I think it'd be great to get a running back win MVP. But we talked about the game in college football with OSU Michigan. There's also another tradition this week: Thanksgiving football. I don't know about y'all, but it's really not Thanksgiving unless you got the food and you're watching the games all day. And you know who plays on Thanksgiving. The Cowboys. They have the Raiders come into town. Justin, what's going to yes, happen? In there's this a week? game before that. Lions, Bears. But I'm not previewing that game because I probably won't watch it because those teams are <laughs> awful. And if Justin Fields doesn't play, I really ain't going to watch that game. Oh, he's he's not, he's not right oh, no reason to watch that bullshit then. <laughs> Raiders at Cowboys. Raiders lost to the Bengals um, on Sunday. Joe Mixon just went off. All the Bengals did on Sunday was just run the ball. and The Raiders could not stop it. I mean, the Raiders have been through fucking hell. Absolute hell since they fired John mm-hmm. Gruden. Henry Ruggs probably going to end up in jail. The, um, their cornerback got cut for having guns. No, he threatened the fan. Oh, Damien, Damien Arnett from the yeah. Ohio State University. He threatened the fan on Twitter and was flashing his guns. Shit, just stupid. Anyway, Raiders are 20th in DVOA on offense. Total DVA 23rd. 
Cowboys offensive DVO at eight, defense DVA fourth, fourth total DVOA. Gotta see who's playing for the Cowboys. No, Amari Cooper isn't. CD Lamb didn't practice today, so I don't think we're gonna have them. I still think the um, Cowboys win the game. If we just get back to running the ball with Tony Pollard and Zeke, I expect us to win this game. Not sure if we cover the eight points, but I like us in the bounce back spot against a falling Raiders team. Byron, who are you liking in this game? Cowboys or Raiders? I'm going to go Cowboys. I'm going to go Cowboys. I don't know, man. Thanksgiving. Justin, y'all be finicky. I'm not going to lie. Like, Cowboys, I, there's always something on Thanksgiving where you're just like, all right, it's going to be a good Thanksgiving. Cowboys are winning. Or they just get smacked by somebody. Then you have to hear about it from Friday to Tuesday. Yeah, it does happen. I remember two years ago, that was Josh Allen's coming out party. But mm-hmm. I, just don't see the, I just don't see the Raiders doing it. I mean, Henry, Henry Ruggs was a big loss for them. Like, they absolutely lost their deep threat. They wasn't yeah. scrambling to get to Son Jackson. That's not really working. They they really don't have any receivers, honestly. And they can't really run the ball that good, even though they have Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. So, yeah, I see the Cowboys winning. Don't know if they'll cover, but they'll win. You brought up Josh Allen. Perfect segue to the other Thanksgiving Day game. The Bills in New Orleans against the Saints. Let's first start off with the Saints, man. Byron, how are you feeling about, about this game? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys we literally just gave up 40 points to the eagles on sunday we our defense is trash i've been trying to tell you guys that but no one wants to listen fifth of uh, dboa but go on i i don't i don't, I don't that's it I don't that's the advanced how. analytics brian's defense is good but i'll get into why you guys <laughs> suck when you're done um our defense is poo butt um we can't cover deep threats. We can't cover mobile quarterbacks. Um, our running backs are injured. Uh, we just lost Adam Troutman to a injury. Um, so that goes three offensive weapons there. Um, our offensive line, I think one of them just came back. Um, I forget his name, but I don't see us. I don't see us winning. If we win, it'll be a Thanksgiving miracle. Justin, how are you seeing this game go? Because just Byron as a Saints fan is not enthused about yeah, this game. Yeah, I mean, I quite frankly wouldn't be either because um, Trevor Simeon's playing quarterback for the Saints, and that is yep. just not a good combination of shit. Um, <clears throat> which actually, he hasn't actually been doing that well. I mean, doing that bad. The only he's only thrown like two interceptions since he's gotten started and go. He's not making the big plays. Saints are number one, have the number one red zone offense in DVOA. Don't know how, but they do. Kamar didn't, pl- didn't practice this week. Neither did Mark Ingram, so I don't think the um, Saints are going to have them playing. And Trevor Simeon is playing quarterback for the Saints. Enough said. Man, That man is not good. The defense is not as bad as Brian Byron is making them out to be. They just have they just can't really sustain drives on the offense and do anything with Trevor Simeon quarterback. Saints probably should have addressed their quarterback situation before the year, but they were doing well with James Winston. So Sean Payne probably thought he wasn't answer. So I can't, I, I can't really be mad. I mean, James Winston just hurt himself. I mean, that's what it came down to, but I, like, I think, well, yeah, it was a bad tackle on that Buccaneers game. But I think, I think, the Bills are going to blow out the Saints this week. I think the Bills are going to come in pissed off. The Saints don't have the running back, so the Bills don't have to worry about that. The Bills are getting Tremaine Edwards and Star Latulile. Edwards is a linebacker, and Latulile is their defensive tackle. So the run, the run defense should be better. I don't think the um, Saints are going to um, make the playoffs, not with Trevor Simeon at quarterback and the Vikings winning again. And the Bills also need to win this game because they are the last playoff team in the um, AFC currently right now because New England is winning that division. 
which is wild because a couple of weeks ago when we spoke, Justin, New England was at the bottom about to not make the yeah, playoffs. And here we are. There. The last time we were on, we specifically talked about can the, can the Patriots even make the playoffs? It's looking pretty good now. The Browns mm-hmm. fell off. Chargers fell, fell back a little mm-hmm. bit. The, the Raiders fell, fell yeah. all the way off. Bengals, they won mm-hmm. this week, but they play the Steelers this week. So, yeah. Steelers I mean, lost. Steelers were streaking, and then they yeah. fell back off. Mm-hmm. AFC's a fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see the Saints winning this game either. That crowd's going to be pumped, but I, I just don't. I don't see it. I also want to know that why, because with their salary cap, why is Taysom Hill getting a new deal? Wasn't his, um, I think he signed a deal before the season that was, for like, that was for way more money. And I know this one's less. Mm-hmm. I think they restructured his contract. Okay. Restructured. Oh, good. So that will give you guys yeah, some salary. That, that will be the reason why they did that because they can't. Yeah. They don't. They literally don't have any money. They're like minus seventy five million the cap. I saw last week. Yeah, they have no money. Minus seventy five. Jesus. Crazy. All right, let's end it off with the best segment in the NFL. Aki's picks for the week. Um, Go ahead. It's still Tuesday at time of recording, so. I don't have all my picks. I might tweet some on Sunday because it's early. But for right now, I got the Bills covering minus six. I think they're going to go into New Orleans and just stomp on the Saints. Sorry, Brian Byron. And then I got the Steelers plus four and a half at Cincinnati. Joe Burrow mm. is looking a little. He, he's not playing bad per se, but he's, he's not looking as sharp as he was in, earlier in the season. And the Steelers' defense is really good, especially if Minka Fitzpatrick and T.J. Watt and Joe Hayden play this week, unlike they did last week against the Chargers. And Cincinnati also beat them before. It's a division. It's a division game. Steelers really need to win this game. Bengals do too, but I just I just can't take the Bengals in this spot. Not as a favorite. And yeah, I gotta go with Mike Tomlin and the Steelers getting four and a half points. And then if I got any more, I'll tweet it out on Sunday. All right. All right. With that, that's the end of the super pod. So we will go start off with you, Justin. Any closing, your closing remarks before we go to Byron and wrap this up? Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the Buckeyes football on Saturday. God, I'm too early. Enjoy the Cowboys on Thursday, Buckeyes on Saturday, and the rest of the mm-hmm. NFL on um, Sunday. Fair enough. Byron? Go Saints, you know, you know, you're probably going to get thrashed at home with, you know, Drew Brees commentating and all that Drew Brees halftime stuff that's about to go on. But, you know, have a happy Thanksgiving. Go Saints. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Watch football all weekend, starting on Thursday. From Thursday to Sunday, you should be watching football every day. Uh, And with that being said, this is the L7C. Signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.